with Keeks. Yeah. Um, Keeks is an incredible writer. She's got a great career in writing and writing and lots of writing. <laughs> um, so she's here today to talk about writing. writing. So Keeks, hello. Do you want to start by telling us just maybe a bit about what you've done so far? Yeah. So I obviously left school, went on to do my A levels. As part of my A levels, I did English literature and language. So then I did that at a new university. So I did English literature with creative and professional writing. Ooh. That's a very long title. I knew that I wanted to write when I grew up, but I also knew that. I wanted to continue with English and like learn and analyse more like books and different types of writing and different writers' voices and kind of find my own voice. While I was at uni, I interned. Mm -hmm. So um, I lived with my parents, so I stayed in London and interned at um, a newspaper. Then afterwards, I carried on that internship, just going back and forth. Kind of, it was kind of bad because I was an intern, but I would do two weeks on and two weeks off. So they never had to pay me. Oh, yeah, sneaky. So, sneaky. But I did. I really enjoyed it. So even though it was unpaid, and that's not good, I did. I was really grateful for my opportunities there because I got my first ever like celebrity interview when I was an intern. Wow. Who was and, that uh, with? That was with a band called Lawson, who have now right. defunct. Wow. <laughs> After after my interview with them, I told them I was like, that was my first ever interview, and they were like, no way, like we oh. did, we never guessed. So I was like a fan ever since, but yeah. they were very nice, and I was like shaking with my dictaphone, like, tell me what was the worst <laughs> party you've ever been to. Like, I'm sure I, I thought it went really badly, but they said it went okay. Oh. Um, so yeah, so and then while I was there, I applied to be an editorial assistant at Black Hair Magazine, mm. Hair Magazine and the Hair Awards, so it was just one big umbrella job. And I thought, oh, do you know what, I'll go, because that'll be a really good experience, because I won't get it, because I've only like, interned a little bit, like on and off. Yeah. Um, I haven't ever had like a three month stint as a paid intern, which is normally what you'd need to do before you get a paid job as an assistant. Oh. Okay. Um, so I was like, I'll just go and see what an interview is like. I went and after like a month, after my first interview, I finally I got the job. So I was editorial assistant there for just under two years. And then my editor went on maternity leave. And I was like, oh, maybe they'll promote me to like features writer or yeah. something. And they called me into the room and like, we would like you to be the editor. And I was 23 and I was like, uh, come again? <laughs> You want me to edit this whole magazine by myself, um, which was amazing, yeah. and I I knew I couldn't say no to that opportunity, but it was very nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. um, and then when she came back, I became the web and social media editor, and then I've now gone freelance. 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 It's really scary because maybe I might not be able to eat. Help me, I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> so life is freelance. Literally. Yes, yeah, so that's my really Great. long story. No, that's a good story. Um, so up to this point, I'm mm -hmm. going freelance. You have written for other yeah. Oh, places. Yeah. So what are some <laughs> of the best places that you've written for? Without a doubt, BuzzFeed. When I got that, I was so stoked. I was like, I don't even know what, like, why I pitched to them. And all thought I had the audacity to pitch that like, I want to write about this, but I did. I was like, I want to write about being single. <laughs> <laughs> Like no one in the uh, in the world has ever written about being single, but <laughs> I thought like my singleness was different. Time Out magazine, I've written for them, which again I was like, what? every time I get a pitch commission, I'm like, me, <laughs> really? <laughs> Even though I had the audacity to like pitch, I was like, me. Um, and Refinery Twenty Nine because I read that site every single day. I thought that was wicked. That's good. So then, when you're pitching out, what okay. makes a good pitch, basically? Okay, I would definitely say the good, the best pitches start with the subject line. So if you just write, want to write for your website? Question mark They're probably not gonna mm -hmm. open it because they'll have hundreds and hundreds of people wanting to write for the website and they don't have time to answer every single one yeah. so they know what they need their website needs so if you put in the subject line what your article is about and you put it clearly interestingly maybe a bit funny whatever they know oh i'm looking for to hire someone to write about being single in london or being a christian in london or being 
I don't know, wearing natural hair in London. <laughs> so they will then open your specific email. But if it's just really general, like, mm -hmm. I want to write for you. So you're kind of writing a headline exactly. as a subject line, basically. Exactly. So um, for, I wrote for Cosmopolitan, and for that one I put black, like, black hair, uh, article, pitch, and then um, is, do you need this? Or something that was like, do you... Do you, does your website need this? Question mark. Because it did. Yeah. And no one had written. It wasn't. Good. I didn't actually get commissioned for the hair one in the end. It was to do with foundations, but their website was really lacking on anything to do with any ethnic minorities. And I thought, well, if That's I'm, good. why not? Why not me? Yeah, and like you spot the need mm -hmm. and you fill it. So you kind of you tell them what they're missing and exactly. you offer. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. One of my favourite quotes that I heard recently mm -hmm. is, people don't like to be sold to, but people love to buy. So oh, you don't so want to sell yourself or your ideas to them. You mm -hmm. want to give them something that they oh, need, yeah. so they want to buy it. They exactly. want to buy into it. How long, roughly, would you say a pitch is? I would say a pitch, first of all, is why you start off with why you want to write it, yeah. why you should write it, and just a really small insight into your feature mm -hmm. um do not write out your feature and send it to them because as much as you want to believe that people wouldn't take it they may um and you know people could still take your idea that's why it's really important to say why you specifically yeah. should write it so if i'm gonna pitch to someone about um like tips for afro hair i've worked i've been the editor of black hair magazine so that's why i should write it yeah. as opposed to someone else so why what kind of uniqueness can you bring even if it's not a unique idea yeah. what uniqueness can you bring great and so as a writer there must be times when you sit down to write maybe yeah. you've had a good idea yeah. and you're sitting down the words are flowing then all of a sudden you're like or oh, and you're at a dead yeah. end what do you do when you're just kind of sat there, you need to get something done, mm -hmm. but the words, the inspiration is just not flowing? I wouldn't say going to see a friend, because sometimes that can be a bit unproductive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so just get out of the house. Don't sit at your desk punishing yourself because you can't write. Um, I would also say that if you're stuck, because I find the hardest thing to do is to stare at like a blank page on your laptop or a blank sheet of paper and then try and write. Yeah. I find that incredibly hard. So what I used to do at uni, um, which this was with essays, but I still do it now if I'm writing a, um, like a more fact-based piece, is write out all the points you need to include, then form those into like paragraph headers, and then from those paragraph headers, write out each point that you need to make from those headers and then you've basically got the bare bones of what you need to write great and then just fill those in that's good i need to put that into practice because i'm always sitting down and getting just yeah. like a mind block what's it oh writer's block, writer's block. <laughs> like brain block writer's block yeah, yeah writer's block yeah. yeah so then i studied journalism at university mm -hmm. um and i've not had anything published like Keisha has kind of in Cosmo and all that kind of stuff. I've not gone down that route. So I've started a website um, and I've used the things that I learned at university about journalism to kind of fuel that. Mm -hmm. um, we've kind of both done writing-y, yeah. journalism-y things. Mm -hmm. How important do you think it is to have a degree that's relevant in writing to actually your success as a writer? I think that the only people that are really successful as writers are people in creative industries are people that go for it and push themselves and don't give up. Yeah. I don't actually know how fruitful a writing or journalism degree is to a writing career. I think that if you do a degree that you're passionate in, it will fuel your creativity. Yeah. So whether that's philosophy, whether that's anthropology, whether that's media studies, whatever you enjoy, you will find something to write about and then that will then, as long as you've got communication skills and you know how to, you know, produce a sentence, you will be able to then turn that into a writing degree. I don't think it's like particularly essential. Yeah. Just get yourself out there. Get yourself out there. Yeah, so we'll be keeping up with Keeks Reads Yay. on socials. But thank you so much, Keeks, for You're chatting welcome. to us today and giving us all of your advice You're and your wisdom. You're just a fountain of knowledge. Oh, bye. So thank you. And we'll be back soon with more people who are professionals and can teach us good <laughs> stuff about life. See you later.
Girl Got Faith is the teen girl's guide to faith, beauty and lifestyle. If you haven't heard of us before, then check it out below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.